And I'm Becky. And we are doing the bickering book review of Towers Falling by Jewel Parker Rhodes. Yeah, Jewel Parker Rhodes. Okay, so this takes place actually now. this September 11th because it's 15 years after the September 11th event happened. And it takes place in New York with a 10 year old girl who is learning about the September 11th attacks in school. However, uh, the school is doing all it can to kind of ease the children into the horrific events that happened that day. Um, and just about like her life and how different human connections affect so many people and seeing how the communities interact through that way. Right. So yeah. And I, under, I respect the fact of the book because I've talked to kids who are 12 or 13 years old who don't know about it. They literally did not know that that happened. Which is super weird to me. Right, well, because we live through it. Right. Right. Well, and the other thing that they brought up in the book, which I thought was really interesting, um, and I thought was super weird, but totally true, is the kids living in New York don't notice the missing towers. Like, right. they don't, they'll see older pictures of the Twin Towers in New York and then, you know, look at it later. Nobody really thinks about it, but like they're missing and that's a big piece of New York that's not there any longer. Well, and it's like, it's odd and this is like such a weird place to go, but like if you watch old episodes of Friends, they have a lot of shots of the towers and you're like, oh. Wow. Yeah. Um, and so my big, so I listened to the book because I literally was not going to have time to get through it if I didn't listen to it. It's read by the author. I had major issues with the way she read it. I think she was trying to sound younger. I found it grating. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I had a few problems with this book. Um, I don't even know where to start. So really this book is supremely middle graded. It, it is. is not teen, even though typically we review teen books. This is, she's 10 years, Deja, the main character is 10 years old. So we were given this book at a conference, by the way. Because they're really pushing it. I they mean, are especially really because it. it's the 15th anniversary and all of that. And it's something that people need to be um, taught. My issue, One of my issues with it, which is an issue I have with a lot of middle grade books, which I had issues with when I was like a middle grade person reading middle grade books, it's heavy handed. So explain more about that. So it is so... I can't even know how to explain it. It's like everything is so extreme in the most serious moment possible. Like the situation with her family, the situation at school. I just, I can't even explain it, but it was something when I was a kid reading these kinds of books I didn't like. That's why I didn't like these books when I was a kid. See, and to me, I, along those same lines, I felt that um, everybody was just putting in more feeling than I thought would be true to actually how humans would interact as far as it seemed like everybody was totally devastated by all of this like right. her teacher could barely function in the classroom because spoiler alert maybe because the classroom where she was when the towers hit the buildings the teacher had actually watched it happen like in reality not on tv screens or anything so she's still living with that issue and then you've got Deja's father, who is a crumbled mess, to the point that they start learning about the, the two towers in school. Deja knows nothing about it, even though her father is like completely devastated by it. And then he doesn't want her to learn about it at all, and she's never seen any video footage or anything about that. It, it just doesn't feel real to me. Well, and... And I mean, I could be wrong because like we're we're from a different state. We weren't right there, so maybe the feelings are different if you were like in New York. Well, I will say I remember watching it when it happened. I remember watching the news, and I remember it was difficult to watch. And I remember going out that day, and it being just like almost like a blanket of sadness was over the world. But I just. I feel like that she was in fifth grade. Isn't that kind of late for them 
to be learning about it. I mean, if it if it's literally right there, and I realized that it was supposed to be that she wasn't going to the best schools before then, but I mean. We learn about local history starting in, like, second and third grade. And maybe they didn't want to cover it when they were that young. But, like, the thing is, I feel like you couldn't get away from it. Because every year, I would assume that there would be newspaper articles. And, you know, yeah, she's 10, so maybe she doesn't see it all the time. But I feel like at some point, you would have crossed it somewhere along the way. Especially when they're opening this new museum. When they're opening right. the Freedom Tower. Well, and then they just happened to be in a financial situation where they didn't have a TV. So, like, they weren't, so there was that. And I also don't understand that because of the events that the father experienced, he was so shattered, and this happened 15 years ago, and his oldest daughter is 10. Ten and there are two younger children. How? Pre-K, right? Pre-K how did he function enough to get married and have children? But what woman would allow that to, like, why would his wife even allow that to happen? But I understand, like, if you love someone and you want to be with them, but why would you bring children into it? Which is what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, that is such a disservice to your child. Right. Like, he couldn't hold down a job because he had serious psychological issues, which it doesn't seem like he's getting any help for, but maybe he doesn't have health insurance or any of that. But, like, he's so shattered, and I'm sure, like, there were years, at least five years, yeah. before having children, that you would have known that. And I'm sure that he would have been worse off mentally when it first happened right. than even, you know, 15, 15 years later. So were they supposed to have been together <coughs> when it happened? I, I don't understand. I, 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 the timeline seemed off to me. And... I mean, it, like I said, it's an important... Maybe it wasn't... So it didn't feel off to me. It just didn't feel real. It right. didn't feel like it could actually happen. It didn't feel realistic. A lot of the different pieces and parts playing together didn't feel realistic. I, yeah, I just... And like I said, it's a short book and I had difficulty getting through it. Even though I listened to it, I had difficulty getting through it. Yeah, I mean, it was a short book so I was able to get through it quickly, but like... It, this is getting a lot of acclaim. This is getting a lot of acclaim. And I think I think this the story needs to be out there. I think we need to make it in a way that kids can understand it. And I understand them learning the, what happened as Deja learned what happened. I understand that that's like a really good way to do it. To but, kind of ease into it, to talk about community first right. and talk about how everyone's all connected. And then to kind of finish off with... Because it's scary. It is, I mean, it is scary, it is scary especially if it happened, yeah, you know. Four states over, it was scary when it happened. Um, and the world changed. But I just, I feel like it could have done, it could have been done better. I agree. And then, my other thing is, so, there was a big statement made about we need diverse books, which I totally agree with. And how this author really kind of keeps it in the forefront of her mind in making books diverse. And how she talks about, like, in her experience, <clears throat> when she's reading, she would read, like, as a white person. Like, just automatically. Mm -hmm. um, but then as you get into the book, so it, it does have diverse it's characters. But like I just like that reflects New York. But, like, the thing is, it felt like it was... Push, because I can feel like when you're living in that, like it's, especially as a 10 year old, you're not thinking specifically like, oh, this person is blah, 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 and this is what she does, and yeah. blah, blah, blah. It just felt very pushed. However, the author doesn't really describe the main character very well, especially physically. I mean, I couldn't figure out that she was 10 years old until halfway through the novel. Right. So I'm thinking like, if you want to combat, you know, reading light and not seeing, you know, yourself in these books, like, why wasn't there more kind of physical description of the main character? It was like saying we're diverse because <clears throat> I just said we're diverse. So, yeah, I mean, I totally applaud the idea of diverse books. We certainly need more diverse books. I totally want more diverse books. I just think that it could have been approached better in this book. Yeah. So we should read it. <clears throat> Okay, I think I'll give it one fairy. It, 
I mean, it was okay. That's where I am. It was, I, I think it served a purpose, and I think it's an important lesson that needs to be taught, but I think it could have been done better. And, like, honestly, if a kid were asking me for a book about September 11th, there are several mm-hmm. others that would do better and several others that they would be more interested in. Um, I think that as an adult, it brings up interesting concepts for me, but I think that through a child's eyes, it's just like, no. it's too preachy, I guess. It was just heavy handed. That's it. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so that's where we Sorry. Are. Okay. Adios. Yeah.